So let's now page, turn to page 10, big page, page 10. This is a payoff page. How do you communicate? How do you sell to different styles? Once again, we'll start with the D. When you're working with the D, you want to be direct, concise, to the point. You want to answer what and when. They don't care how you're going to do this proposal. What, when, get out of their way. When will you be back with me? Cut to the chase, get to the bottom line. At the bottom of each of the quadrants, it says suggested words. So I'm working with you. You're a high D. I'm going to use words like this will make you more competitive. This will reach your results, your goals, your objectives. Get her done now. We can do this quickly. Those are words that communicate to the D. Anything, results, objectives, get it done now, more competitive, let's be aggressive about this, that communicates to the high dominant. If you're communicating to me, which is the high I, you want to use people words. You want to be excited, you want to show some social, socialize with me, <clears throat> Spare the details. I'm not a detail guy. I remember if I'm a high I, generally my C is very low. But what you want to do is follow up with me. So, Chris, if you're calling on me and you're trying to replace the copier with your copier, I'm going to give you three months of my copier bill. I don't know if you still do that or not, but that's what we used to do. And I say, Chris, I'll get it to you by Wednesday. Call me on Monday and Tuesday. Remind me, because, Chris, I'm a high I. You need to follow up with me. Do it nice, do it, do it, don't, don't beat me up, but you gotta give me a friendly reminder. Or what are some words that you can use with me as a high eye? Brian, you'll be excited about this. You'll be recognized. You'll like working with our team. You'll be excited about this. Those are words, if you're selling copies, I'm gonna, your, your employees will love you for this because it's so much easier for them to use. Guys, those are words that connect with the high I. Selling to the high S. First of all, slow down the process. Don't push the process. Go slow and easy, earn their trust, answer all their questions, underscore the word reassure. Lower right hand corner, underscore the word, reassure them it's the right thing to do. Reassure them it's safe. Reassure them there's no risk, low risk. All right, I'm going, to go, I'm going to go old school salesy on. Here comes an old school sales technique. Hang in there with me. We're going to change it up, but go with me on the first one here. Feel, felt, found. Mr. Prospect, understand how you feel that way. Others have felt the same way until they found the value of doing business with us. What you're trying to do is saying, that's okay, I appreciate that. Their hands come from here to here. I've had other customers that are using us now have the same feeling. Oh, really? Their hands come here. But let me tell you the benefits they found. Their hands don't come all the way down, but they go from defensive to a little bit more open. That's all you're trying to do. It's an empathy statement. Here's how you use it. Thanks for sharing that. Others have shared a similar concern. Let me tell you the advantages they discovered. I can use the words feel, felt, found without using those specific words. Thank you. Others have shared a similar concern. Let me tell you the benefits they discovered. And all I'm trying to do is say, I'm on your side. I want to empathize with you. Because with the S's, you need to empathize. They want to know you're on their side. When you're dealing with the C's, prepared and structured, go in with evidence, proof, testimonials. Address disadvantages early and let them know what and how you do things. Because they like systems. They like process. They want things orderly. Therefore, if I'm selling and communicating to these people, I want to do it in an orderly fashion. Words like statistics, national averages, the system we use, the process if something goes wrong. We have a process in place to serve that need. If you let them know that you have a system they're more likely to embrace your product. Fair enough? Next page, big page. This is how to sell style to style. So the next page is gonna tell you, find your quadrant and read about yourself and the other three people within that quadrant on how you communicate and sell to that person.
Now turn to your neighbor, the person we discussed earlier, what style he or she is. Now turn to your neighbor, now that you know the style and you know how to sell to that person, how to communicate more effectively to that person, if you had to talk to that person this afternoon, what would you continue to do and what would you stop doing? What strategy would you use if you had to talk to the person we looked at their style on the pages prior to this? So let's have that, that's a two minute discussion. Let's turn to your neighbors, go. Need your attention. Folks, slow down to go fast with this. Don't say I got it. It took me a while to understand it. I would suggest that this week, the rest of this week, you choose one style. Let's say you chose the C. Everybody you come in contact the rest of the week, look for that tendency of C. Some you'll find it, some you won't find it. Next week, take a look at another style, maybe the S for next week. People that you come in contact, just be aware, maybe there's S tendencies that you're seeing. The next week, choose a different style. Within four weeks, within a month of September, you could have internalized the four styles. But I promise you, it's better to bite-size it than to say, I got it, and make a mistake. It's easier also, if you don't know somebody's style, to start with the C and move back to the D. Because if the person's a D and you're a C or an S and you see their ANSI, you can pick up the pace. But if you start with the D and come on too strong, sometimes they're not forgiving, as forgiving. So make sure that you watch that. But look, it, it's based on a lot of things. It's based on their behavior to you, and it's based on understanding yourself so you can adjust to them. How do you handle, you're making a presentation to a D, an I, an S, and a C, and you're making the same presentation and you've got all four of the styles present. Mr. D, you're gonna see how we do this because results are there. Now, Miss, S, Miss I, you're gonna like this because our people are fun, it's, it's enjoyable to work with them. We don't wanna upset the apple cart, Mr. S, so we wanna make sure it's smooth sailing. The process and the system we use, you'll enjoy because it gives you the quality results that you want. You would do it slower, you would do it better, but you can still do that with you have a D, I, S, C in your audience. It takes time in the territory. One of the things that we don't do, we don't study our profession enough. I'm sorry, you don't, I don't. My brother-in-law is a knucklehead. The man is a knucklehead. He played at Broadmoor High School. He broke all of Billy Cannon's rush, rushing records. He broke all the, the school's rushing records. He's 5'8", quick as a lightning. He went to LSU on a scholarship. He was playing with Burt Jones. He was redshirted a year. He had one more year of eligibility and he gave up his last year playing football at LSU to go to dental school. What a mental person. He went to dental school. So he's in dental school, he gets out, he practices for a couple of years, and he says, I want to be a periodontist. So he goes to Chapel Hill and becomes a periodontist. He does that for six or seven years. He said, eh, I want to be a plastic surgeon. So at age 40, he sells his practice, he goes to med school at LSU, or whatever it is down there, and he becomes a plastic surgeon. I gave him $50 and he got a plan, I can't recognize him to get the money back. So he's a plastic surgeon. You go to his house for a social event. All the doctors are in this corner looking at medical journals. The salespeople are in this corner, how about them cowboys? I mean, salespeople don't study their profession. These guys are talking about protocols and practices and taking noses and moving it, and the, these guys are telling sales jokes. <laughs> Learn your profession. It's amazing we are in a profession that we don't study. We're in a profession that doesn't have to designate, so therefore we don't know if we're qualified or so. Guys, gals, you're professional salespeople. You're not peddlers. You need to go to school. Jim and his doctor friends taught, now they're to the obnoxious, don't get me wrong, it's obnoxious. But it's amazing that they continue to study this stuff. And Jim, when he goes to his home, has all these medical, you don't want to look inside him because you can't eat after you've seen these things. But his hands are touched by God because it's amazing what he's done. But they study their profession. Don't be afraid to take the time to invest in yourself. It's very important. Invest in yourself. Take your time to understand yourself and the other people necessary to sell more effectively and to sell with more comfort and ease. One of the things that I, that I 
I pride myself, and I have a passion for salespeople. And the reason I say that is that I wanted to be successful, but for six years I proved I wasn't. I know there are other people in this auditorium that want to be successful in sales, and they're missing that 12-inch journey somehow. I've been there. I understand. But I know you have the qualities necessary to do it, or you wouldn't be here. The people that think they can sell aren't here. You're investing in yourself. So when you leave, continue to do that. This is one of the things you need to continue to do. Questions, answers, comments. Anything else for? Now here's what's happened to me several times. I go talk to the president of the company. He says, well, Brian, we have 26 branches. Go talk to the guy across the street. He's our North Texas branch. If he likes it, it'll work in the other branches. I'll call him for you. Hey, Gregerson here. Yeah, I'm going to send Flanagan with Ziegler. He's talking about sale training. 15 minutes. Click. So this is great. Thank you, sir. I go across the street. I'm going to tell the guy the president sent me, and this time I'm not lying. <laughs> so I walk in and say, I'd like to meet Bob. And Bob comes out, and Bob is hell fellow well met. Bob has never met a strength. Slash me on the back, pumps my hand. Have you met Brenda? She's our vice president in charge of work. Let's go see if you look at the tour. So we take, take a tour of the plant. I meet everybody in the plant. I know how many children they have, what position they're on the softball team, what, what order they're on the batting order. I'm thinking, I'm a high eye. What is Bob? He's a high eye. I mean, we were separated at birth. I'm going to make a say. So he said, Brian, have a seat in my office. So I sit down. I'm, I'm, I've already spent the money. He said, have a seat. So I'm, and I'm listening to Bob outside, and he says, Brenda, hold all my calls for 15 minutes. And he walks in his office. He turns out all the lights in his office. Didn't think I knew him that well. <laughs> he gets behind his desk, turns on a lamp. He says, Flanagan, what's your first question? Where did the other guy go? What happened to Bob? But here's what happened. His social style in the lobby was high eye. Now he's behind his desk in a defensive business mode. He has no idea what the president and I talked about, and he's changed on me. How do I deal with him, where he was or where he is? Where he is. I go back to the Ziegler Corporation. I send him an email. I do not send the email that this is not what I said. Dear Bob, you can be pumped up and be fired up and be excited. I did not use those words. Dear Bob, thank you for your interest in Ziegler training products. The following is submitted for your consideration. Eh, eh, eh. So we get the job. Two months later, we train all these 26 managers in Florida. We give them the profile. Bob is a high I with a D backup. What I saw in his lobby style was who he really was, but he was defensive because I didn't earn the right with him yet. So it took time to do that. Had I not known this, I would have written the email and the proposal to, the different, to a different guy than I should have. Once he settled down and we earned the trust with each other, he became a high I with a D backup, which is my style. So we got along. Got nothing done, but we got along. <laughs> Does that help any? Because guys, I promise you, if you learn to, if you're recruiting people and you, you know they can be challenged, because you're, you're a military recruiter, you understand that. Some people you can, you can teams from training to education to service to challenge them. Some kids you can challenge. Some people that are prior military you can challenge. Some people you can't. DISC helps you do that. All right? 